presentation out first. So. Uh, oh. All right, you can confirm that everybody can see that. Yeah, all is good. Good, right. So uh, the areas that we're going to cover are the uh, preparing for the AGM, the understanding the articles covering the AGM, keeping the AGM on track, and accessing additional support. And while, as Aaron says, we'll have questions throughout, if you put them in chat, and Aaron will have breaks for questions throughout the evening, uh, confine your questions in the chat to areas of the club constitution concerning the AGM, because that's our topic tonight. Uh, Simon will have some slides later on, which will indicate where other relevant information can be accessed. And we, we probably won't have all the answers to all the questions, but if we don't, we won't bluff and we'll ensure that you get the answers in, in due course. So there are the areas, the topics of conversation. And I suppose no better place to start than the GA official guide and the club constitution 2021. And these are available on the GA website. The URL is there and you will get it when, when Aaron sends out uh, the, the pack to you later. Um, I suppose I would say that when you're involved in administration in the GA, you should familiarize yourself with these documents, in particular clubs and uh, should familiarize themselves with the club constitution. In reality, it's only roughly about 20 pages at the end of the official guide. But it will mean that you'll, you'll have run a more effective club if you're familiar with the, the contents of um, the club constitution. It's also advisable that you would uh, make yourself not necessarily familiar with everything in the official guide, because I don't think there's anybody that's familiar with everything in the official guide. But there are seven chapters in the official guide, and there are a number of areas like transfers, regradings, things like that, that are useful for clubs. And I suppose most, if we're honest, when you're involved in a club, the first time maybe you go to the official guide is when you've had a player sent off and you're trying going to a hearing or you're going to appeal and you want to, to see how can you get them off. So um, it, uh, that's all my advice on that. Go to the official guide, make yourselves familiar with it, make yourselves familiar with the, with the uh, club constitution. So we we'll move on then to the club constitution itself. And uh, rule 3.5 of the official guide states that each club shall adopt the appropriate form of the official constitution at a general meeting. Now, uh, you may or may not be aware that the club constitution hadn't been updated for a number of years. And at Congress 2021, following a long consultation process with all units of the association, uh, there were areas of change were, were made. And one of the areas was up to now, uh, both were referred to as the rules of the official guides and the rules of the club constitution. Now, the, 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 it led to confusion from time to time as to whether it was the rule of the official guide or rule of the club constitution. So we no longer refer to them as rules of the club constitution. They are now articles of the club constitution. So you will hear me referring as we go through the evening to the articles of the club constitution. Um, now in these slides as well, a lot of the, some of the text will be in blue. And that is to, to indicate where there were changes made from uh, the old club constitution, as, uh, for the want of a better word. So uh, article 14.1 refers to additions and amendments of rules. So additions to and amendments of this constitution may be made at an annual general meeting or at a special general meeting called for that purpose, providing that the resolution proposed the same is carried by a vote of three fifths of the members present. Now heretofore, that was two thirds, but be in line with other voting practices throughout the, the official guide, that is now three fifths, entitled to vote and voting and that the same do not conflict with the official guide and the approval is given by the county management committee for the changes. Now, uh, what I would say is there don't conflict with the official guide. I, I'll just give you give you an example. Um, 
for for example, the club constitution states that you to be eligible to vote, you must have paid your membership by a date prior to the 31st of March each year. Now, if a club decided, well, we would change that to the 30th of April. Well, that can't be allowed because it's in breach of the official guide and 2.1 of the official guide states that all membership must be paid before the 31st of March. So that's just an example of what you can't do and why uh, amendments to the club constitution must go to the management committee of the county before they're approved. We move on then and article 14.2. Who can change uh, or propose changes to amendments to the constitution? But that can be done by any member of the club, provided they send a notice in writing not later than 14 days before the annual general meeting or a special general meeting as provided. And that again is a change. It was 21 days, it's now 14 days. And of course, if the club management committee or executive wish to have proposed something for um, change at an AGM, well then it's the secretary that would come through the secretary and go to the members. Now people will ask, well what happens if we've already got articles or amendments made to our club constitution prior to the change in, in February? Well that's okay, provided they have uh, been previously approved by the county management committee and they don't conflict with the rules of the official guides or with uh, new articles of the new club constitution, they should remain in force. Now, there may be some that may have to change. For example, uh, Article 7.2 of the club constitution, which we'll come to it later, states that you can have no more than 10 full members as the addition to your executive. Now, before it was five minimum, but no maximum. So clubs may have up to 15 or whatever, so you'll have to reduce that now to 10. So now we move on to preparing for the AGM. And the timelines here are very important. And they can be seen in articles 8.5.2 and articles 8.5.3. And there is a, a, a seismic change here in that up to Congress 2021, you had to notify, you had 28 days before the AGM, you had to notify your members. And 21 days was the deadline for motions and nominations, and 14 days was the deadline for issuing the documents back out. So now that has been brought forward to 21 days, 14 days, and seven days. And that's obviously because uh, methods of communication are much faster now. In, the, in, in, in previous times, everything was done by post. Now, a lot of it is done uh, by email and uh, the methods of notifying members are set out in rule 4.6 of the official guide. And one thing I would say to secretaries in particular, when you're sending out notification, if you're sending out group emails to your members, please ensure that you use the BCC option in the email that other members don't see other other members email addresses because they may not wish them and you could be in breach of GDPR. So that's just uh, a warning on that one. So then timelines as referred to. So an AGM should be held at such time as decided by the executive of committee. So it's the executive committee that decides on when the, the AGM is held but it should be held not later than the 30th of November. Now, prior to Congress, that's at the 30th of November where possible. That has now changed. And unless you get the prior approval of the county committee, you must hold it on the 30th of November. And the reasons for looking for it to be after the 30th of November must be genuine because the county committee uh, won't sanction it otherwise. And it's a bit easier on clubs now because the date for uh, financial end of year was the 31st of October. Now that's the 30th of September. So it's that bit easier to have your financial statements in place. And what happens if you don't hold your, your, your AGM or continuously 
uh, refuse to hold your AGM. Well, Rule 3.2b of the official guide says, a club affiliation shall not be accepted unless a club has held an AGM within the preceding 48 weeks. So if you're a club and you decide, oh, we, won't hold, we won't hold our AGM and we'll defer it until February. Well, when it comes to affiliations, if you haven't held your AGM, the county committee is not to have a choice in the matter, it's the word shall is there. So they shall not accept your affiliation unless your AGM is held in the preceding 48 weeks. And then just at the end of the slide, we have the, the demonstration as to the timelines. So we we'll take it that you're holding your AGM on the last day, which is the 30th of November. So on the 9th of November, which is uh, 21 days previously, you must send out notice to your members to that effect. The members then have until the 16th of November to return the motions and nominations. And then on the 23rd of November, the documents are issued to uh, the members. So what documents are issued? Uh, the documents that are issued are the AGM agenda, Secretary's annual report, the financial statement, Council Auditor's report, list of nominations and copies of motions. And again, this is what goes out seven days before the AGM. And Simon will deal later on with the uh, agenda for the AGM, what's entailed in that. So we'll take a short sus at this stage and Aaron, are there any questions in? Yeah, I have two questions here. So should the clubs adopt a, a, the amended constitution this year to accommodate the new changes? Yes, they have, and Simon will be dealing with that as part of the agenda for the, the, the AGM. Perfect. And then the other one then, so clubs can adopt the, 20 to one, the 2021 constitution as a template and then apply and add their own amendments like we were seeing earlier. Is that correct? That's correct, provided, provided again they're not in conflict with either the club constitution or rules of the official guide. And then there's one more, I think this will be looked at later on, but do the accounts, do the accounts need to be audited? I think that could be looked at later on. Yeah, Simon will deal with that, with that later on. That's all for now. Okay, that's good stuff. We'll we'll proceed at pace, as I say. So the next area we'll move on to then is articles covering the AGM. So articles covering the AGM. So we have the nominations. Article 7.2 deals with nominations. So the executive committee should be comprised of the chairperson, vice chairperson, treasurer, secretary, registrar, officer of Irish language and culture, public relations officer, children's officer, and one player's representative. And at least five, but not more than 10 other full members. Now that's the change I was talking about earlier. And this came about after the consultation process because uh, we found that a lot of clubs were, were saying that uh, committees were becoming unwieldy and they weren't um, uh, working properly because there was too many people on them and people weren't doing the work and different things. So it came to situations where at AGMs, there might be a nomination for 12 people for the, the, the committee and someone would say, we should look at if they're, we'll put them all on it rather than having a vote. So the new, the new article says not more than 10 other full members, but that doesn't obviously pre preclude you from including people who wish to help out on subcommittees or indeed on work groups, because uh, I think work groups are a great initiative for a club where you have a job of work to do over a short period of time and you can go to somebody and say, look, I have this to do, I need you for three to four weeks, will you? Because people will do that rather than going on committees. So rule 4.1 of the official guide says, only a full member who has paid his annual club subscription prior to the 31st of March in a membership year shall be entitled to be nominated for or elected to an elective office referred to in the official guide arising in the same membership year. Now, a big change here is there was, over the years, there would have been conflict where somebody would say, I paid my membership and I paid it by 
the 31st of March where they may not have had or whatever. And, and, and you know, a lot of pressure came on the registrar or the treasurer or the secretary to, to, to put the onus on them to prove the person didn't pay it. But the onus is now on the member to prove they have paid their membership subscription. And obviously, uh, if you do it through Ferrin, well, then there's no problem in proving you paid it that way. Or if you if you paid by cash or by if you pay by card again, your proof you pay by cash, well, then you, you simply look for a receipt. And if somebody paid by cash, they 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 should get they should get a, a receipt anyway. So uh, now rule seven or article seven point five of the club constitution in relation to to that also says that only full members who membership fees are paid up to date in accordance with article six point two and are who are not suspended or disqualified under the constitutional rules of the official guide shall be eligible for election to the executive committee. So uh, that's an important one to, to, to take note of also. So we move on now to nominate uh, Article 7.3. A nomination to serve on the executive committee shall be by any two full members, which may include the nominee with membership fees are paid up to date in accordance with 6.2 and are not suspended or disqualified. So in order to nominate somebody, the person that's being nominated must be a member, but also the person who is doing the nominating must be a member. So if I want to stand for uh, election in my club, Coolary, well then I can nominate myself, but I must get another full member to, to nominate me. Right. Uh, so the executive committee shall be elected at the AGM by the full members present entitled to vote and voting at the annual general meeting. And there's three exceptions to that. The children's officer and the officer of the Irish language and culture and the player's representative who shall have participated as a player with the club within the previous 48 weeks shall be appointed at the annual general meeting on the recommendation of the outgoing executive. Now, there is a change in relation to the players' representative. In normally, they were elected at uh, the AGM, but this time they're going to be nominated by the outgoing executive. But prior to that, there is also an, a nomination procedure, and that's as follows. The players' representative shall be selected by the players on a date appointed by the executive committee. In default of such a selection, the executive committee shall select the player's representative for our recommendation to the annual general meeting. So again, it's the players have the opportunity to select their representative. Uh, if they fail to do so, again, the executive committee then have the power to, to, to make the nomination. And uh, my final slide in this area is in the event of the number of nominees for any particular executive committee position being equal to or less than the number of positions to be filled, such nominees should be declared elected and a position left unfilled shall, shall be filled by the new executive as soon as practical after the AGM. So, for example, if the, I'm the chairperson of my club and I decide not to seek election, and I chair the meeting to the end of the AGM. There is no chairperson in place. The remaining members of the executive who have been elected call a meeting, appoint a chairperson for the evening, and then go about their business of finding a chairperson. And it is up to the, the, the committee to do that. So uh, that's the full total of my presentation for the moment and now I'll hand you over to Simon. Great, uh, thank you Pat. Stop presenting. And, okay and I will share my screen so if you'll just uh, bear with me for a moment.
Now, and you might just confirm, I think that's uh, set up now. Yeah. Perfect. OK, uh, thanks, Pat. Um, moving on to other, I suppose, uh, matters that are relevant to the AGM, the club AGM, I'll deal with, uh, first of all, the couple, first couple of slides will be in relation to the quorum. How is an AGM quorum? And uh, the, act, the relevant articles will follow, including Article 810, which uh, says that no business shall be transacted at any general meeting, that's the AGM or a special general meeting, unless a quorum of members is present at the time when the meeting proceeds to business. And save as herein otherwise provided, 15% of the full members eligible to vote shall be a quorum at a general meeting. But there is another requirement, which is that there must be a minimum of 15 members present. And uh, for most clubs, I suppose, uh, 15 members will be less than uh, 15%. So that's in relation to getting your AGM quorum. Now, Article 811 is also relevant and it provides for circumstances where perhaps you're not quoted at the appointed time or indeed within half an hour of that. And what that article provides for is that if within half an hour after the time appointed for a general meeting, a quorum of members is not present, the meeting, if convened under requisition of members, shall be dissolved. And I'll deal with that at the end. In any other case, it shall stand adjourned and be rearranged at a date and time to be decided by the executive committee, provided the reconvened meeting takes place within 14 days of the original meeting. Again, that text in blue is new. It was introduced at the Congress in February earlier this year. The other one in relation to general meetings requisitioned by members is somewhat different and is dealt with elsewhere in the club constitution, but it's not relevant, let's say, for the purposes of the AGM itself. Uh, at a reconvened AGM, if uh, a quorum of members is not present within half an hour, apologies, after the time appointed for the meeting, the members then present shall be a quorum. So that's a saver on it. Uh, if you don't have the 15% at the reconvene meeting, uh, half an hour elapses and then the members present shall form a quorum and legalise, I suppose, the proceedings of the meeting. Now, I'll move on to voting and Article 9.1 to 9.6 deals with voting, but I'll deal with Article 9.2 in, in initially. And uh, that provides basically that a chairperson of a general meeting executive committee meeting or any subcommittee meeting shall, in the event of a tie, whether on a show of hands or on a ballot, have a casting vote in addition to his vote as a member, irrespective of whether or not he had originally voted on the issue, except or other than for the election to any position. And where the tie arises on the election or a, a ballot uh, for a position, then the outcome in the event of a tie shall be decided by a lot. You draw lots and the first person chosen shall be deemed the winner of the tie. So the first person out of the hat is the, 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 the takes the position. And as I say, articles 9.1 to 9.6 uh, cover voting in the club constitution. Um, Pat has gone through in some detail some aspects of this just to remind you, I suppose, that only full members are entitled to vote at GAGM and that are full members with uh, their subscriptions paid and so on, and that are not suspended or uh, disqualified. The chairman, again, just to repeat the earlier slide, will have the casting vote in the event of a tie in addition to his own vote as a member, except for a tie in the case of an election. Generally, a vote shall be decided by a show of hands. That's the default position, let's say a show of hands. Uh, unless a ballot is demanded, the chair shall declare that a resolution put to a vote is won or lost. Now, if a ballot is demanded, the chair shall direct the manner in which it is taken. And a secret ballot shall be carried out to decide the result of any contest for any elective position. So that's the only context in which a secret ballot is required under rule. Now, uh, before I suppose moving on to the questions, just to say if a ballot is demanded, a ballot w can be demanded um, on the declaration of a result 
or prior to the declaration of a result by any five members. That's provided for in, in, in the articles when you go through them. So just to, to check if there are any further questions and answers, and if there are, uh, Pat and I, depending on what, what they the, 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 uh, relate to, we'll deal with them. Yeah, thanks, so, William. Um, if yeah. you can be in there. So just one on the quorum there. If a quorum is not met, met the first time, how does the requirement for the AGM meeting by the 30th of November apply? Does it still have to be held before the 30th of November? Well, my understanding of that would be that if it was called before the 30th of November, uh, it would validate the meeting. The fact that it wasn't called the first day, uh, Pat may have an alternate view, but that would be my view that, uh, that it should be convened prior to that. Yeah, I, I would agree. It, it, it would be considered to be an adjourned AGM after that. Yeah. It would, have, it would have convened before the 30th of November. Perfect. And then there's a few then on the members for executives. So we have a contrast here between the small, the small clubs commenting and the large clubs commenting as well. Some of the small clubs, um, if they can't get the additional five full members on the executive meeting, if they're a small club, yeah, um, how, how would that affect? In my opinion, and Simon might come in as well, uh, that's okay because you're not... when, you, when to fill any any committee, you you don't invalid invalidate a committee by not having somebody on it. You only invalidate it if you have somebody on it that shouldn't be on it. So if you can't have five people on it, you're not invalidating the the the, the, the committee. I would but, I, I would go along with that, Pat. Very much so. Yeah. Now on the other one, if you have more than more than ten people on it. Well, then you are invalidating the committee and you're leaving yourself open to be challenged. So what what I would say is, I, I know that the argument is there for some large clubs that they need that many. I, I wouldn't necessarily agree. We have a management committee in Crow Park which manages the GA at, at national level and there's 13 on the committee. Most county committees who manage their counties have 13 or 14. The trick is to uh, organise your, 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 um, your subgroups, your subcommittees. And ensure that they're they're w well organised, and that a member of your executive heads up each subcommittee. So therefore, your subcommittees are feeding into your your um, executive. I think like 19 on any committee is to me is it's plenty, and that is the thing that came across on on all the workshops we had. That's perfect. Um, a few more here. So when the chairperson can have the cast and vote, is this the case for the election of officers? No, no, it's not. It's it's uh, where you have a tie with the election of officers. It's, it's in all cases dealt with by uh, drawing lots. So the chairperson doesn't have a casting vote in that instance. But in relation to a resolution or a motion, the chairperson, irrespective of whether the voters on the motion initially has a casting vote in that regard. Lovely the sole fun. exception is the elections. Perfect. For full membership, then does family membership would that count as full membership? Well, there's there's no such thing as family membership in the no. in the sub constitution. That is something that is adopted by clubs, and they may, as part of family membership, allow say for two full members, a youth member, and a, a child member, or whatever. So, if that is if the, if they have done it that way, that you're well then. If there's five in a family, say, of two adults and, and, and they say that the adult, they're given a discount for full membership, well, then, yes, they will be they will be entitled to vote. And of course, only the full members of that family grouping would be eligible to participate in the AGM to nominate or to be elected. And then one more here then, and people are saying due to COVID, membership may not have been paid by the 31st of March or the 31st of May, in some cases they could have been extended. Do they still count as full members for this year and can they vote on an AGM? If it, it was extended to the 31st of May, it wasn't it, I think, this year. It, yeah, it was, no, yeah. If, if that was the date that was given 31st of May, so no would be the answer. That's right. And then there's still just a little bit of confusion there for the the maximum number of people on the exec on the executive committee. So the maximum number of committee um, on the exec is 19 at the moment. Yeah. It's perfect. Perfect. So we'll continue on, guys. Yeah. And then on the questions, then there'll be another section for questions then at the end of the presentation. Thanks, William. Okay. Thanks, Aaron and Pat. Um, 
I'll just continue on voting on Articles 9.1 and 9.6, um, and it deals with some aspects that were raised in questions there. Only full members are entitled to vote at the AGM, and full members, of course, are over 18 years of age. And of course, they should be, um, they should also be fully subscribed. No, am I going backwards? I am indeed. Sorry, <laughs> keeping the AGM on track, I went uh, reverse. Uh, keeping the AGM on track, Article 7.6 provides clearly that the outgoing executive committee shall conduct the annual general meeting. That's the, the, the committee that would have been elected at the previous AGM. Article 7.7 of the club constitution provides that the executive committee shall hold office until the conclusion of the following an annual general meeting. And Article 8.12 provides that the chairperson and failing him the vice chairperson shall provide shall provide or preside, excuse me, as chairperson at every general meeting of the club. Now, Article 8.13, if there is no such chairperson or if at any meeting he is not present within 30 minutes after the time appointed for the holding of the meeting, uh, the members then present shall choose someone of the number who is a member of the executive committee to be chairperson of the meeting. And if there shall be no member of the executive committee present, then the members shall elect any one of their number to be chairperson of the meeting. And again, that presumes that the meeting is quoted unless it is a reconvened uh, AGM within 14 days. But it must be quoted uh, to, to proceed. Now, the agenda itself and some questions were raised in relation to that. And the AGM agenda is covered in Article 8.4. But I will deal with some other aspects of it that may arise under other business uh, in a later slide shortly. The first thing that would uh, arise at uh, an AGM would be the adoption of standing orders. And they would rarely change. They would um, be the same standing orders generally from year to year and so on. Uh, the minutes of the previous annual general meeting, of course, would be dealt with, uh, proposed, seconded and approved if, if, if agreed. Consideration of the annual report submitted by the secretary. Consideration of the financial statements, <clears throat> excuse me, including the report of the accountants or the auditors. And the question was raised earlier in relation to must the accounts be audited? And there is no requirement in rule that accounts be audited, but you must have, there is a requirement to have a report from an independent accountant or auditor. And of course, clubs can uh, arrange for the conduct of a full audit by an auditor for their accounts. Um, the, uh, and I'll come back to that maybe maybe later with uh, and show the articles in the actual constitution to deal with 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 that aspect of it, seen as a question uh, was raised. The AGM on the agenda would also have the chairperson's address, the election of officers and members of the executive committee, notices of motion or resolutions, um, and other business. Now it's very important to state, and this is an addition that occurred in February last at, at annual Congress, other business does not include the appointment of managers, coaches or selectors of teams. This is the business of the executive committee of the club. So that's very important and it's something that's often raised. It is not the business of the annual general meeting, it's the business of the uh, executive committee. Now, I think, uh, Aaron, you, you might want to conduct a poll uh, in relation to um, juvenile AGMs. And basically the questions that will be posed is, does your club have a juvenile club? Is it yes, no or unsure? And the second question would be, does this juvenile club have its own AGM? Yes, no or unsure? And that might be useful too. Do you want to take over here, Aaron? Yeah, so two seconds, I'll put the poll up in the chat. Yeah, great. And maybe while you're doing that, I might just um, go to um, and and show. Uh, I'm not sure if you can if you can see the screen. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just the elements of the club constitution that deal with uh, the requirement for an audit or otherwise 
based on the question that was asked. And 11.5, you'll see. No, it's not. Simon, it's not. Poly, uh, poly, uh, yeah, apologies. I, I, I'll try. I can try again. I might stop sharing. Uh, I think perhaps what Aaron is doing is probably. Yeah. So if you'll just bear with us. Apologies here, folks. Just a little bit of an issue with the poll coming up. You see loads coming into the chat anyway. We can continue on even without the poll. I think. Aaron, I'm just wondering uh, in terms of the sharing of my screen, is the poll interfering with that? We stop no, we shouldn't be. It should be OK. OK, what I'll do now is I'll, I'll try and get up the club constitution. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. On the screen, yeah. OK, yeah. sorry, that's just in relation to the query that was raised earlier. It's a Word document. Can you see it? Extracts from the club constitution. Yeah. Yeah, and basically 11.5 provides that an independent, suitably qualified person or persons shall be appointed as accountants or as auditors to report on the accounts and financial statements of the club for presentation at the annual general meeting. The important words there, I suppose, are independent. Um, if deemed appropriate by the executive committee of the club, the accounts and financial statements shall be audited. So that's uh, uh, at the discretion of the executive committee itself. Uh, a copy of the accounts and financial statements as adopted and approved shall be submitted to the county committee within four weeks of the date of the annual general meeting. And we'll, we'll come on to that later. Um, and obviously there's a requirement there that um, the financial statements be approved by the executive committee and signed by three officers, the chairperson, secretary and treasurer on behalf of the executive committee. So. Um, I'll unshare there. Just bear with me for a moment. And I'll get back to the to the presentation itself. Now, so that's the the poll is ongoing. Just in relation to um, sorry to juvenile AGMs, while the poll is ongoing, the club executive is the controlling body of the club, and is the only committee that has a remit to hold the club AGM. So juvenile clubs are. What are styled as juvenile clubs do not have that remit or do not have that authority. The juvenile games provided by the club may, at the discretion of the club executive, be managed by a subcommittee of the main club executive, providing this subcommittee conforms to the rules governing subcommittees, and they are outlined in the official guide. Duties of the subcommittee are defined by the executive. So the, the delegation or brief is provided by the executive committee of the club to the juvenile subcommittee. Control of expenditure is still retained by the executive. And the chair of the subcommittee is appointed by the club executive and the club chair, vice chair and secretary are all ex officio members of the juvenile subcommittee. So that's what the rule provides in relation to it. I know the practice may may differ and we'll get an insight into that perhaps with the poll when 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 Aaron, uh, gives us the result. Other things to consider I mentioned on other business in relation to the agenda for the AGM that other matters that can arise from year to year um, would include under rule three five of the official guide the adoption of the club constitution. That's particularly relevant this year in light of the fact that the club constitution has been changed and amended and clubs would be required at their next general meeting to adopt uh, the revised club constitution. Pat dealt earlier with cases where revisions have already been approved uh, for individual club constitutions, that those uh, changes do not need to go through the process uh, again at Club AGM. 
on uh, you know and they, they they must all comply with the requirements of the official guide they cannot be contrary to a rule in the official guide itself or indeed an article in the top constitution uh, rule 53e uh, chapter 5 of the official guide deals with the real property of the well all property of the association including the real property which would be the land um, uh, buildings and so on and it is uh, required that each club indemnify the trustees of the club property. That should be done if it hasn't already been done. And very often it's very useful to have a record, for example, in a minute of an AGM or a general meeting, that that has been done. Because occasionally it can be sought, not always, but occasionally it can be sought by legal people acting for the club in relation to property transactions and so on. And Article 6.1 of the club constitution itself requires ratification of the club subscription for 2022, uh, for example, in future years. So that's an item that should be brought up under other business uh, at each club AGM. And uh, that will be if it were changing and so on. Uh, the executive committee proposed the level of club subscription, but it's ratified by the annual general meeting. Now, there's also um, post AGM a number of items that um, need to be attended to very often by the, the, the club secretary, but also perhaps by the chairperson or by some of the other officers. And uh, it's useful to have cited this checklist once the AGM business is concluded. For example, convening the first club executive meeting at which any unfilled positions uh, where there were no nominations or whatever um, would be filled at that stage at the first club executive meeting generally. The creation of the necessary subcommittees and here the, the juvenile uh, subcommittee would be relevant. Obviously for the secretary to write up the AGM minutes, to submit the AGM report to the county secretary, to comply with all aspects of rule 3.2 and in re Rule 3.2a says the club affiliation for the following year, which requires obviously, as Pat pointed out, that the AGM would have been held in the preceding 48 weeks. Um, rule 3.2b relates to club team affiliation, submitting teams for competitions for uh, that year. And then uh, Rule 3.2c uh, is relates to the payment of fees to the county committee. Now, there's also, it sh there should be, and it's, it's very good practice to have a handover process for new officers, elected incoming officers and, and, and of the club. Uh, it's very useful to have a formal handover from the previous officer to the new officer. I suppose to identify also training opportunities uh, for new officers and uh, the training portal and uh, GA website is an excellent, an excellent source, uh, a resource uh, for clubs in that regard. And it's also good practice to hold a club executive planning meeting to discuss the year ahead. That would be particularly relevant, I suggest, for, for maybe new officers. So that is important. Now, there's a lot of material available that can be accessed uh, on the training portal generally, but on the way, the, G the GA website generally. And some of it is outlined here. For example, the official guide in the club constitution, which Pat mentioned earlier, they're critical really. Uh, it doesn't take an awful long time to read the club constitution or to read the rules in the official guide that pertain specifically to the club. General to have a good understanding of all the rules, obviously, but the ones pertaining to the club itself, um, uh, particularly important, I suggest the GAA learning portal and uh, when you get you have a link there to that uh, the county secretary in each of our counties would obviously be a source of advice and guidance in that regard as well and the generic email uh, address uh, for county secretaries is, is given but most of you will have that already the club officer training uh, portal where there's excellent material uh, for the individual officers in clubs which is extremely useful. And uh, there's also very valuable club AGM templates available. For example, a motion form, a nomination form, uh, specimen AGM minutes template for that, 
which is a very useful guide, particularly if 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 you've uh, if you're an incoming secretary that hasn't dealt with an AGM previously. The the claw itself, which which I've gone through earlier, and which is covered in the articles in the constitution, and a meeting sign-in sh sheet, and they are all available via the GA club folder structure, and uh, the link is is given there. Now. Resources for virtual AGMs like this one, the, uh, this webinar will be available and uh, when it's uh, circulated, a link will be provided. And uh, voting using Microsoft Forms webinars are also quite useful. And they are all available and uh, it would be well advised that, that um, club officers and that use them. So back to questions again. Uh, Aaron. Thanks a million, Simon. Just in the poll there, interested come in, it was just under 40% of clubs had a juvenile AGM coming in the, on the questions there, so a little bit of change on the normal ones. A few questions coming in. And so there's actually a few um, questions there about the standing orders um, of a meeting. Just before you go on to that, but my comment on the, the, the clubs that have the AGMs for their juvenile, like it, it's it's against rule and they should they should desist from it because there is only one GA club. There is no such thing as uh, a juvenile GA club. So the executive of the senior club, of the, the adult club, or the adult team, the, the club actually, Sorry, no adult club, this club. It's up to them to select a committee for a juvenile to run juvenile affairs and they retain control. And I think it's very important that clubs who have at the moment are running uh, AGMs for, for juveniles that they change their policy. I, I would concur with that. And it avoids any challenges to decisions made or whatever uh, can be very important in that context. That's perfect. And um, a few came in there just about the standing orders and templates and all. Um, I have templates for standing orders for uh, accounts and all that stuff, and they will all be circulated um, tomorrow morning to all clubs and to all attendees of this webinar as well. So be rest assured you'll get them in the coming days. A few more then coming in for clubs that offer LGFA and Camogie. Um, if, are, they, are they entitled to vote at the GEA AGM? Depends, so all the, the, GEA, the LGFA members. It depends on the way they have their membership structured within the within the club. So it, it, there's no definitive answer to that. But if if the membership is covers all, is all encompassing, yes. But it, it's really up to the, the, the club itself. Perfect. A few then coming in um, from COVID now with for COVID, are we allowed to have AGNs um, in so in person AGNs this year or should it be all refined? I know. That's an evolving situation, I would suggest, and uh, public health guidance uh, is the relevant uh, regulation in that regard. I would say the intention would be to hold them, and you can hold meetings indoors. Um, uh, but I would also advise maybe uh, COVID certs and so on. I know in, in, in some counties that's what's happening uh, for county committee meetings, and I would say the same for the, 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 the club AGMs. And they, there's there's nothing to stop them having having kind of a dual AGM where some people can can dial in and they can have it in person as well. So it's an option. That's perfect. Just one here. Would you mind go back to the dates for the notification to members at the AGM dates and timelines? Ooh, yeah. I mean. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Mike. I suppose this is the best one to use, where it says that uh, if your AGM is the 30th of November, 21 days previously, you issue notice to members informing them of the AGM. Then on 14 days, you issue motions and nominations that have been received, and then seven days before the AGM, you issue the documents. That okay? That's lovely. 
And then can a membership increase be implemented before February if the register like if the registration the membership increases by five percent, etc. Could that be implemented in February before registration? Mm. I would say the, the, the executive committee propose a, a subscription level. Is that is that what we're talking about? Yeah. yeah. And once it's approved at the AGM, it's uh, it's due, it's effective, you know. That's lovely. That's all I have for now, guys. There's just one that I, I thing I'd, I'd like to bring in there. It's not. It wasn't in any of the slides, but it, it it does come up from time to time. It's in relation to if somebody doesn't get their notification on time or doesn't get the, the particularly the one say maybe seven days notice of the meeting or whatever. And you can get maybe probably for the want of a better word, a contrary person who tries to say that the, the, the meeting is invalid because they haven't got their notification on time or whatever. But uh, Article 815 deals with that and it says failure to comply strictly with the time limits set out in this constitution and rules or the non receipt of notice of a meeting by any persons entitled to receive notice shall not invalidate the proceedings at that meeting. But what it shall do is entitle the majority of members present to seek and be granted an adjournment of the meeting to such date by which they could would be given an adequate time to furnish with and consider the contents of any relevant documentation. So basically what it's saying there, if it's if it's, if it's a frivolous um, complaint or whatever, well then the meeting will just carry on. But if, if there's a daring mistake where a number of people are, it appears that maybe it hasn't been done Correctly, but then if the majority of the meeting are in agreement, but then the meeting is, is is adjourned to give them time to consider the, the documentation. And just in that then, Pat, so what information in Senate notes, what information is needed in the notes to members? The note, we, yeah, we have that there, go back to that again. I'm still sharing um, notes to members. That's the, the documentation. The AGM agenda, secretary's annual report, or the notice to members, sorry, is that the initial notice? The initial notice, yeah. yeah the initial notice just says that the, the executive committee of the club has decided that the AGM will take place on whatever date, and it'll, it'll submit a form where they can make nominations for a committee or for the executive or nominations for motions. That's perfect. And there was just actually one clarifying comment on the we previous question about the increase of fees if it's not ratified at the club AGM could it be an increase in membership no no I, I would say that uh, it requires ratification if the executive committee propose a higher figure or a higher subscription rate but the AGM does not ratify it then it doesn't because it has to be ratified at the AGM and that would be my take, Pat. Yeah. yeah, and if there's nothing proposed, then the the the, the status quo. Just, yeah, yeah, status quo. The, the other thing, there's a question there in relation to the dates and so on, in relation to the um, um, notices and so on. I would say that there is an obligation under rule on clubs to uh, comply with the current once Congress had passed the, the, the changes and the, to the, the, the articles of the club constitution, they are the current ones, they are the binding ones. The obligation is on the club to make sure that they adopt it at the next AGM. I don't know, Pat, if you would have a different view in relation no, to that. I'd agree with that, no, no. Yeah, and I, I just see one there as well about uh, ter term limits, time limits on, on executive officers. And again, that's that's a classic one now for the use of the amendment uh, uh, amendments to your club constitution. So that is one that you can put into your club constitution where you put a time limit on how long a person can hold a, a position. There was one then about ratifying the club constitution. Is that normally done right at the start of the AGM before standing orders, after standing orders of the new club constitution coming in? I, it does, I don't think it's material. I, I, I think uh, it, the sequencing of the agenda items, I don't think is critical, you know, or invalidates, but I, it might be a good practice, in fact, to do it first, you know, but in any event, the official guide makes it binding on clubs. In relation to, there's a query there in relation to Fern, which certainly I can't answer as to 
to, 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 but uh, I suspect uh, a note uh, IT or so on uh, I might, might establish that whether there is that functionality in the firm system that existed in service sport. Yeah, I have the email address there from St. Lawrence's. I'll send that out. I'll actually send that out and the answer out um, in a mass email to the to the members in here as well. So I have that noted. No problem at all. I, I see one there as well. It's a tricky one. If minutes of a previous meeting are not provided, how do we progress? Um, I'd say you've no choice but to progress. Yeah. Um, what, what could be done is uh, the, the the people present could um, the people present that were present at the previous meeting could um, put together uh, um, minutes. I, I presume this is talk. This is in a case where maybe there's I don't know a rift in a club or something, and somebody walks away or something like that and doesn't provide. I would say it's not fatal to the to no. progressing with you. It doesn't invalidate what's happening. And I think the practical thing to do would be for members who were present at the previous AGM, okay, you know, right. to construct the key decisions that were taken, which will be known. The members who was elected to the executive committee were the financial statements uh, uh, approved. You know, that's, that's really, it's, it shouldn't be impossible to construct a minute. Um, there's a question there. Is players rep a voted position or filled on recommendation of outgoing committee? The uh, ideal, as Pat mentioned, that the players have the opportunity to select their representative uh, in consultation, I suppose, with the executive, the outgoing executive, to notify who that person is, and that then that person is appointed by the AGM. There's not an actual vote on it. Previously, there was. Is that right, Pat? That's mine, was that? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's the players, the players select and and they notify the the, the executive and then they put them that person forward. And it probably would be good practice for the current executive, the outgoing executive, to liaise with the players in some fashion and ask that they would nominate their rep. Uh, There's a question there. Just the financial year has changed to the 30th of September. So should the period for the accounts of this year change, or is it next year? That kicks into effect this year. This year, yeah. Um, th there's a question again. What if we can't construct content of previous AGM, i.e., minutes? Um, I would suggest that would be a very unusual circumstance. You know, and I'm not. I'm not being flippant. I, I would think it would be highly unlikely. But I would. I, I wouldn't think it invalidates no. moving forward with a new AGM. Even if minutes cannot uh, or are not furnished by the outgoing Rooney or secretary. No. And then there's one or two then just about the nominations forms. The probably the most effective way of the nominations forms would be through email and just coming back to the to the club executive. Say that again. The, oh, the yeah. oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. Nomination yeah, forms yeah. and yeah. distribute nominations forms. Yeah, that that that's allowed under under rules, so they can be submitted yeah. by. Email. But again, as I said, ensure that if you're submitting them, which you would be, or, or emailing them out in the first instance, you will be emailing them in bulk. Ensure that you put it in the BCC rather than putting all the, the email addresses visible. I don't know if there's anything else. I'd say you do pro, pro, has probably answered the financial statements or financial report up to the 30th of September. That's that's in place now. That's in situ. So rather than up to the 8th of the AGM. So then just, so there's an 11 month financial year this year rather than a 12 month. Yes. Yeah, perfect. And then it's coming to just the BCC function just to explain. So the BCC function is just on the emails, so there's no one can see the email addresses you're sending so for data protection reasons uh, and there's a tab when you're sending the emails just for the BCC function to come and come in. Yeah. Uh, there's a question there is the difference between a motion and a resolution. 
And do motions always relate to the club constitution or can they be used to agree other rules in the club? For example, there could be um, motions or resolu- the resolution is something that's resolved, I suppose. It's the end product of a motion in my, in my mind. And they could also deal with uh, motions to the county convention. You know, which would often be discussed at the AGM. They're not confined to um, they're not confined to the club constitution or amendments to the club constitution. Yeah, you could you could have things like whether we're going to put in a a, a third team in the league or mm. you know different. There could be different motion. It's not it's not confined. Uh, there's one there as well. I see. Do we only prepare a financial report to the 30th of September, or should we show accounts up to date at the AGM? No, just to the 30th of September. There. It's an 11 month accounting period for up to this year. If members have paid by installments, are they eligible to vote as they were not fully paid by the 31st of May? That's a matter, I think that's a matter for the club. If, the club, yeah. Yeah. if the club approves a facility that you can pay over a period of time, I would say. I mind the first installment is paid yeah, by the Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's another just came in there about the, the Camogie and the LGFA. Again, they'll be up to the club the way they're doing it. Yeah. yeah. How the, the single club is, is structured. Just again, there's somebody, another query there again in relation to the 30th of September. But it, it, that's just like, it, it's like any set of accounts. They're, 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 they're a snapshot in time. And you're basically all you're doing is you're presenting the accounts as they were as of the 30th of September. And uh, the reason they were moved back to the 30th of September was to give clubs an opportunity because with the deadline of the 30th of November for your to have your AGM to ensure that clubs had an opportunity to prepare their accounts. Another one there is the view that there should be a few general meetings during the year for the club members, not in the executive, to ensure as much involvement as many members as possible. That's um, purely a matter for the club. Yeah. And then for rounders, then would be the same matter as the DIGFA and the Camogie as well. Yeah. Yeah, a recording will be sent out with this. Um, as well. So this will be going out tomorrow morning to all clubs and to all attendees here as well. Uh, a member has requested a list of all paid up members. Can this be provided? Uh, actually, in the old in the old club constitution, the list had to be had to be displayed. Um, I think the they are entitled, recollection, uh, Simon might correct me if I'm wrong, they're entitled to view it in the company of the secretary or the treasurer. Is that right, Simon? Yeah, that, that's my understanding of it. Up to then, they wouldn't it get to be displayed. Up, they wouldn't be given a copy of it, but they'd be given an opportunity to view it. It's probably useful to say that for an AGM, a record of the paid up members, the fully subscribed members is, is, is quite useful because very often if somebody wants to challenge, I suppose, decisions of an AGM, they very often look to establish that somebody who hadn't paid the membership or whatever uh, had the opportunity of voting, that there was something illegal in relation to the voting. So it's it's useful to have good records in relation to memberships paid and so on. One here on life membership. If life membership is granted, um, should clubs automatically register some or do they need to apply to for to vote in the AGM? Um, I'm not, they're entitled to vote, but uh, I'm not sure what way it works in Fern. That would one that would need to be clarified, I think, with the IT. So there'll actually be a webinar coming out, a webinar series in possibly January, February about Furlan. 
and for club members, club officers and county and provincial officers in there as well. So that's in the, in the pipeline um, for January, February, hopefully as well. So there'll be webinars coming out on the use of and for all club members. Come uh, on, the various sections of one club have their own age. Again, that's, that is a matter for the way the, the, the one club model is structured. And, and there's a very useful guidance document in relation to the Sunday club model, which covers that aspect. Uh, and it is available on the GA website. In the accountant's report, is that, that should be included? Uh, have you, you don't, we don't have a template on that, do we? There's a, there's a template, all right, for that as well. Yeah, that'll be sent yeah, out okay. in the resource pack in there as well. Yeah. Membership payment, can you get a list of the paid online members in the system? I presume you can. I don't know enough about fair and to answer that question. Well, I think that's they're saying that you can get a list of the paid online can't, members sorry, from the can't. system, but you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, folks, I think we'll wrap it up. Right. That's been very, very helpful. Many, many thanks to Pat um, and to Simon as well. I hope you learned a lot of it as well. So thanks, thanks so much to the lads. Um, and like we said at the start, this is, this was being recorded and look out to all clubs um, and all attendees along with a with a resource pack on the GA's learning portal as well. And you'll get that email from yourself tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon. So guys, thanks so much and I hope you enjoyed it. Gorimila Mila Mahagov. Thank you. Slant.